Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. This episode we're going to be fiberglassing the outside and bottom of the hull. So the first task was to get this thing flipped. At first I thought we could just roll it onto its side and then pick it up and set it onto those sawhorses. But it's already gotten much too heavy for that so I had to rig this ratchet strap system from the beam in the ceiling and then use that to lift the bulk of the weight. Then with the boat suspended from those straps, I was able to enlist my brother and my friend to help me flip it over relatively easily and lower it back down onto those sawhorses. After I'd flipped it, the first task was to trim the side pieces uh, even with the uh, bottom and transom there. I used this oscillating uh, saw for that. After that was trimmed, you can see that it left a uh, rather sharp angle there between the bottom and the side. I was worried the fiberglass might have a hard time making such a sharp turn, so I'm going to use this Surform uh, multi-rasp that I picked up on Amazon along with a small block plane and see if I can uh, round off those corners. You can kind of get an idea here what I was going for. I was shooting for about a half inch radius. I then did the same thing on the other side. Uh, I tried using that power planer to see if it speeded up any, but it really didn't. So I went back to the block plane and the surform rasp. I then finished it off with this random orbital sander with 80 grit sandpaper. Next I'm going to round off that sharp corner on the edge of the keel and I'm using this half inch radius round over bit in the router. Again, I'm doing this not just because it makes it look better and more finished, but because uh, I want the fiberglass that I'm going to apply later to lay uh, easier against the edge. Before I start on the fiberglass, I had to put two little triangle pieces here at the uh, stem uh, where it meets the side hull. I just used this piece of paper to make a quick template and then transfer that over onto a scrap of uh, quarter inch plywood. Now I'll get it in place and get some holes pre-drilled and then take it back off and get some thickened epoxy ready. The two edges there at the bottom of the frame didn't meet up exactly so I used this clamp with some packing tape so it wouldn't stick to the epoxy to pull the edges into alignment. Now I'm going to fill all the screw holes to get ready for the fiberglass. 
and I mixed in some of these glass micro beads that's supposed to make the sanding easier. I think they did help a little and they're relatively cheap so it's probably worth it. In a few areas where the sides meet the bottom there was a little gap uh, where the boards came together. I needed to get these filled in so that I could then round them off so I could get that same radius all along the bottom side joint. For this task I'm going to use this uh, Total Fair from Total Boat. It's a two-part uh, pretty thick substance that you mix uh, in a one-to-one -one ratio. You have one part of the blue and one part of the yellow and when you mix it together it turns green. I just spackled it on those areas that needed the gap filled and then let that harden. There was a slight unevenness along the bottom of the keel there so I used some of the leftovers to fill that in as well. So after it had hardened, you can see how it looks. I just have it kind of roughly built up there, and then I'll come back with the uh, rasp and the sander and get that uh, half inch radius curve that I'm shooting for. After I kind of went over everything with the sander, I used some compressed air to dust everything off to get ready for the fiberglassing. So as it will soon probably become apparent to anyone with any experience with fiberglassing, I've never done this before. My plan here is to use the six ounce cloth I'm going to use a 50 inch wide piece along each side and then I have a 30 inch wide piece I'm going to run down the center of the keel. I started out uh, just rolling it onto the side and then uh, dry fitting it and smoothing it out with my hands to get it ready for the resin. I then thought it was a good idea to try to cut it to shape at this point. This actually ended up being the first of several mistakes that I made. I didn't realize how much the fibers in this uh, fiberglass shift and move. So when I lifted it to try to uh, cut it or move it out of the way, it was hard to get back into place without a lot of wrinkles. What I should have done instead and what I did on the other side is just left everything long and then after the epoxy was applied then make the cut. So after I would cut everything, I decided I wanted to put a little fillet of uh, epoxy along that edge of the keel where it meets the bottom hull so that the fiberglass would have more of an uh, easy bend around the corner there. I should have done this before I ever dry fitted the fiberglass. But after a lot of effort, we were able to get that edge uh, reasonably back in place. 
and my daughter and I started applying this two to one high performance epoxy over the fiberglass. After we'd gotten all the fiberglass saturated with resin, I used this uh, peel ply on the side, but not on the bottom. I wanted to kind of experiment to see which way uh, turned out better. The peel ply came uh, folded up in a package and it was somewhat difficult getting those wrinkles out of it. Pushing and pulling on the peel ply also introduced some bubbles that I couldn't see because of the peel ply. So now we're going to pull it off and see what we have. This is the next day. It was relatively easy to remove. In this shot you can see the texture difference between where the peel ply was stuck and where it wasn't. And I really wasn't happy with this uh, edge where it meets the stem. In this area you can see that little air bubble that wasn't noticed because of the peel ply. And here you can see the texture difference on the bottom of the hole where there was no peel ply. This was probably the worst area. There was a large bubble uh, between the transom and the side hole that I didn't see. So my verdict was that I did not like the peel ply, uh, at least not in this situation. I then started sanding with my homemade uh, longboard there and a uh, homemade block with a half inch radius on it to get against the keel there. The second side went much better. I uh, already had that uh, fillet against the bottom and the keel and so when I rolled out the fiberglass this time and got it dry fitted in place I didn't move it. I'm just using that metal ruler there to hold that front edge in place while I smooth everything out. Here you can see how everything looks with the dry fitting and you can also note that I didn't cut the edges uh, beforehand this time around. Here is the epoxy I'm using. Again it's a two to one mixture so Total Bolt sends you these uh, graduated uh, mixing cups. You can see on that two to one column there that I fill the uh, resin up to the first number four and then fill up the hardener to the second number four there and then you mix it together. I'm just using a paint mixer on a drill there and then I'll start wetting everything out. For anyone interested I used almost exactly one gallon of resin to wet out this six ounce fiberglass cloth uh, including both sides and then the uh, fiberglass for the keel that you'll see here in a few minutes. Overall this side went much better including the surface finish even though I did not use the peel ply on this side. What I did use different on this side is a paint roller that I think gave me a more consistent uh, surface finish I will make a note though that uh, you need to buy a paint roller that's made for epoxy. Uh, I used one from Amazon that you had a uh, 1 4 inch uh, nap. Uh, I had tried some of the little 6 inch long uh, 3 8 inch nap rollers from Harbor Freight and they uh, shed and got into the epoxy. Then once all the fiberglass was saturated I went back and made my cuts to uh, create the edges. This has worked much better than what I had done on the other side. I use this rotary cutter to make the edge along the bottom and keel joint there. This seemed to work best after I had let the uh, resin uh, gel up a little first.
you can see here how much neater this side turned out than the other uh, without using the peel ply. So now it's a few days later and I'm going to get everything a quick sanding to get ready for laying that last piece of fiberglass over the keel. This is that little homemade sanding block I had made with a half inch radius to match that fillet uh, that I'm sanding there now. I just stuck some adhesive 80 grit sandpaper on there. So I'll just get all that dust vacuumed off and then wipe everything down with some acetone. And then we'll get ready to roll out uh, this 30 inch wide piece of uh, 6 ounce cloth along the keel. Here I'm just getting everything uh, smoothed out and dry fitted before I ever mix up any epoxy. started at the stern and just worked my way forward going side to side to keep the fibers in the fiberglass from distorting uh, too much. I had to cut some pleats in there at the uh, stem uh, keel joint to make the fiberglass lay down flat, but uh, overall this part went pretty easy. I also had to do some trimming and folding there at the stem tip to get the fiberglass to lay flat. And then I used that rotary cutter again to uh, cut away the excess fiberglass. I tried to keep about a two or three inch uh, margin away from the keel there. So here's how it looked after the epoxy had had a day to cure. I think my plan now will be to apply a thin layer of epoxy over all the fiberglass I've done so far. I think that'll be all I need for the keel and the bottom before I paint. I really do appreciate you all watching and helping this channel to grow. Please share and leave a like and join me next time as we continue to build the Stevenson Weekender sailboat.